Thank you very much. The next speaker is Professor Stefan Bergström. He's an old acquaintance of mine. In the early 1980s, I was reviewing a Swedish book on family planning in developing countries. It was the first, book, first time I'd read a book that combined clinical training with a wide, wider perspective, taking into account sociological, political, and ethical perspectives. It was also about the value of children, and therefore why women should have the right to regulate their fertility. I was fascinated. The author, for his part, liked my review, got in touch, and that was the start of a friendship. Professor Bergström is an obstetrician gynecologist with extensive experience from developing countries, where Mozambique still stands out. He was the first professor of international health at the University of Oslo, and has later been professor at Karolinska in Stockholm. He claims to have retired last year, which just seems to mean that he has started to work somewhere else, namely in Tanzania. There he is working on building up emergency obstetric care, adapted to local resources, both in terms of available staff and infrastructure. Professor Bergström is a cherished lecturer who has inspired so many before you, and no surprise, he'll have his limerick. A semi-retired doctor from Gotland with loads of experience firsthand. A woman's health advocate. Here, I wonder if I should say something about magnesium sulfate, but that was stretching a bit too far. So, a woman's health advocate for lowering death rate, for rights and justice, he's a guardsman. Please, Professor Bergström. Thank you very much for inviting me, and thank you, Birit, for the nice words. When I lecture on maternal mortality reduction, which I very often do, I used to say to the audience, I'm coming from another planet. And people wonder, what, what do you mean by that? I have 30 plus years of obstetrics and gynecology in Sweden, a neighboring country to Norway. During these 30 years, the zero, I haven't seen one single maternal death in Sweden. Then, as Berit mentioned, I have been a, a director of a big maternity in Maputo, where we had, during the 80s, 50,000 deliveries per year. That was the only hospital in Maputo who could make cesarean sections and other emergencies. That is the same number of births in Norway every year. So we had a rather tough work. So that is my background, that in Maputo, I think I saw 1,000 maternal deaths during the years in the 80s and after that. And that's a huge difference. There's not only two different worlds, but two different planets, completely different. And we are so spoiled in our part of the world, not having seen as a specialist in big hospitals, not one single maternal death. So I am rather incompetent in discussing maternal deaths with you, hadn't I been in Mozambique and in Africa. Now, <clears throat> Professor Ar Arul Komaran made, um, preempted my quotation of the very famous Egyptian professor Mahmoud Fatala, whose quotation should be remembered because it's still very valid today. Women are not dying because of diseases we cannot treat. They are just dying because societies have yet to make the decision that their lives are worth saving. That was said 
14 years ago, and it was absolutely true today also. I have one picture of a mother dying, and this, this is the one. My midwives in Maputo said, Dr. Stefan, it is not very appropriate to take a picture of a woman we know will die. And then I told them, yes, I know this is not very appropriate, but I'm not going to disclose her identity. But I can tell you that during 30 years in my home country, I haven't seen one single maternal death. I need to show to my students, I need to show to my midwives and medical students what is a maternal death. This is a 19-year-old woman having given birth at home, and suddenly after she gave birth, she fainted and she started to convulse, to fit. And uh, the family interpreted that as an obsession by evil spirits, and they took her to a priest to pray, and she convulsed and fitted again. And they took her to another priest, and she continued to convulse, and the day after she fainted and convulsed, the first time she came to us, the Central Hospital in Maputo, Mozambique. And this, we then saw her lying there, deeply unconscious, and she had one ominous sign uh, which told us that she will die. She had no urinary production. And if a woman with eclampsia, this very dangerous end stage of high blood pressure during pregnancy, if the kidneys have stopped to produce urine, we can't do anything, particularly not in a poor country like Mozambique. So the kidneys were out and she was about to die. So this is a dying woman in Africa, but she's dying a very non-typical death, a privileged death, we can say, because she's dying between clean sheets in a hospital. This is very uncommon if you if we, if we think of all the maternal deaths we are talking about now. Now we're talking about half a million women dying in the world, about a little bit less maybe. But we should talk about other figures also. You know, there is something called the lifetime risk of maternal death. And if we have, like in our countries up north here, less than two children per woman and her lifetime, then the risk of dying is, of course, less than if you have six or seven children during your lifetime. Sierra Leone in West Africa has a lifetime risk of something in the range of one in six which means that a woman dying a death, all women will die, they have a one in six risk chance to die a maternal death. In Sweden, this figure is one in 30,000. That means 5,000 times more dangerous in Sierra Leone to die a maternal death, 5,000 times. That's also another expression of the risk of maternal death in our countries and in other countries. This picture is from the Liangene Cemetery in Maputo during the 80s when we in Mozambique were at war with South Africa, apartheid South Africa. 50% of the graves here are children, 50%. There are 300,000 graves here, and 50% of them are children. Many of them are women having di died a maternal death. You can see 120,025, and a little bit back there, 119,976. You note that there are no names here of these graves. So even they are not names, for me that symbol, sim, symbolizes the fact that they are very anonymous. We do not know what the maternal death is, and certainly not the male politicians, except our Minister of Foreign Affairs, who who knows it, but many of the leading politicians in the developing countries, in the poor countries, do not really know the magnitude of maternal mortality. But I would recommend them, and I recommend you, if you're coming to a poor country anywhere in the world, spend one morning in a big, uh, in a big cemetery, and you will see things that you have not seen before. The anonymity of these deaths, People are coming here to mourn, to make ceremonies, etc. even if they have no names on the graves, but they have numbers, and they know that in that particular number, that is my child or that my, my wife. After a number of tropical rains, the anonymity grows, and you can see this picture. Even no numbers there, but still people come to make ceremonies and to mourn. But the poverty, the anonymity, and the, <clears throat> the fact that we have sort of declared them invisible, brings more light to the problem, the huge problem of maternal mortality. But we should also recommend, remember, 
In fact, that was alluded to by the minister, that maternal deaths amount to about almost half a million per year and constitute only a small fraction, actually less than 10% or something like 7% of all pregnancy-associated deaths. And that is, I think, a tip of a non-recognized iceberg. What do I mean by pregnancy-associated deaths? We have something that we could really call, when we talk about maternal ill health, poor health, the unrecognized iceberg. We have heard, and we know by heart, or we should know by heart, that almost half a million mothers die every year. But we have much more than that. We should recommend, remember that pregnancy has two actors, the pregnant woman, the carrier, and their unborn fetus, the passenger. And the magnitude of the problem of pregnancy-associated deaths is firstly that we have something in the range of four million, four million.